Hello and welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video I'm going to be going over a lab that I do with my grade 12 physics students on the ballistic pendulum. If you want to follow along the handout is available for free in the description and the main idea of this lab is for this projectile launcher to launch a projectile into this pendulum and then it rises to a certain angle. The angle it rises to will tell us the initial velocity of the projectile. I'll do one sample calculation of how we do that with the data at the end of the video. All right, to start, we're going to need to know a couple of things. We're going to need to know the mass of the pendulum and the mass of the ball. Now, the mass of the pendulum, I've got some mass attached to it. We're going to ignore the mass of the rod, but the mass down here is about 100 grams. And the mass of the ball, we are just going to test right now. The mass of the ball is 65.8 grams. Now we're also going to need to know the length of this pendulum. So we just take this, we'll try to measure it to a round. I'm going to estimate where the center of mass is. It's about 27 centimeters. Now, before we do our experiment, what we're going to do first is going to use this photogate timer, which is going to directly measure the speed of the ball. This way we can compare what we get with the ballistic pendulum with what it actually is. Now, our projectile launcher has three ranges, short, medium, and long, so we're going to do this three times, once for each. So let's start. So we're going to start with the short range. And the sh and the short range has a speed of 3.38 meters per second. Now let's move up and try the medium range. The medium range has a speed of 5.14 meters per second. And finally, let's check the long range. The long range has a speed of 6.97 meters per second. So attached to our pendulum is a rotary motion sensor, and it's going to figure out the angle that it goes through, and the display is going to be right on here. So let's try our first run. We have it on short range, and, and we have 0 0.65 radians. Now 0 0.65 radians is about 37 degrees. So let's move on and we'll try our medium range. Do a new run. And fire. <laughs> Fell out at the end, but that was okay, because it stuck together all the way up to the maximum. Let's look at that first maximum peak. And the angle was 1.25 radians, which is about 72 degrees. All right, let's prime the last one. All right, last run. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Let's look at what that maximum angle is. 
is about 1.59 radians, which is about 91 degrees. So we managed to get it right above that horizontal mark there. All right, so that was fun. Let me go over one sample calculations with you so you can see how to do it. All right, so let's solve this ballistic pendulum problem. So what we have here is our projectile launcher that launches a ball with some initial velocity, let's call it V1. Then the ball gets lodged into our pendulum and together they move with some velocity V2. Afterwards, the pendulum reaches some maximum height and at that maximum height together, they come to a stop. Now we tested the velocity of the ball on the shortest one, we got 3.38 meters per second. I'm going to do this sample calculation with you and see how accurate our ballistic pendulum actually was. Now, in this case, the length of our pendulum was 27 centimeters. We know the mass of the pendulum and the mass of the ball. And for that short launch, we got an angle, a maximum angle of about 37 degrees. So let's start with looking at that angle. So here I have a pendulum, this length and this length, obviously the same because it's the same arm, right? But I'm going to split this portion here into a nice right angle triangle where the hypotenuse is L. This here is going to be the height the pendulum goes to. And since the total length is L, this portion is going to be L minus H. So with our right angle triangle, I can do a little calculation here. I can do the cos of theta is equal to adjacent with it, which is L minus H divided by our hypotenuse, which is just L. Now, if I rearrange this, I can rearrange it to solve for H. So H would be L minus L cos theta. Now, since we know what all of these are, we know what L is, and we know what theta is, we can calculate H to be, and let's convert this into meters, so 0.27 meters, we get H to be 0 0.0544 meters. Okay, now that we know the height it goes to, we can do a little conservation of energy because at this maximum height, all of our energy is gravitational. Whereas at the lowest point, all of our energy was kinetic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do conservation of energy. I'm going to say the total energy um, at this lowest point must be equal to the total energy uh, at this highest point. So at the lowest point, we just have kinetic. So it's one half of mass. Now it's going to be the total mass because we have the ball and the pendulum. So I'm just going to write M total times the velocity at that point, which I've labeled as V2 squared. And that's going to equal our gravitational energy, which is MGH. Again, total mass times G times H. Now mass is going to cancel. And I can solve for V2. So I'll multiply by 2 and we get 2gh and then take the square root of both sides and we'll get v2. If we plug those numbers into our calculator using the h we got in our previous calculation we get a speed of 1.03 meters per second. So right here together the ball and pendulum moved at 1.03 meters per second. But what did it move here? Now, when the ball hit the pendulum, it got lodged within the pendulum. So this we call a completely inelastic collision. We can use momentum conservation. Say the total momentum at this point must be equal to the total momentum after they collided. So initially, what we have is the mass of just the ball multiplied by its velocity V1. And that's going to equal together, so we have the total mass, multiplied by their velocity, which we just found out is V2. Right? And we'll just call that forward direction our positive direction. So now we can figure out what that 
velocity of the ball was initially when launched if we do total mass times v2 divided by v1 and if we plug everything in there we get the velocity of the ball to be 2.60 meters per second now that's not too bad it's fairly close to 3.38 we can figure out how far off it is by finding our percent error so our percent error is going to equal our actual value 3.38 minus what we got with our ballistic pendulum 2.60 and then divide it by our actual 3.38 and then if we multiply that by 100 percent we get a 23 percent error so not bad you can try the other two the medium and long range calculations yourself and let me know how i did if you like this lab, please leave a like and subscribe for more.